This Able Carry Daybreaker review is going to break this bag down in its entirety so you can know whether or not it's the pack for you. But if it's not, you're gonna to wanna to stick around to the end of this review where I'll make some alternative recommendations for bags that I think are similar, but that might better suit your specific needs. Let's start by talking about the gist of the Able Carry Daybreaker 2. Able Carry is probably Hong Kong's finest backpack making company, which I love because I'm actually based in Hong Kong. A little extra pride from these guys. And about a year and a half ago, we reviewed the Daybreaker 1. And it was a bag that I was a big fan of, but it had some flaws that really kind of killed it for me. So did Able Carry listen to my criticism, my constructive criticism, and make the Daybreaker 2 better, I'm gonna just go ahead and say yes, they absolutely did. And also it wasn't just my constructive criticism, it was probably everybody's. And the gist of this bag is it's sort of like Able Carry's outdoorsiest of all their packs. All their packs have a little outdoorsy spirit to them, but in a way that mixes perfectly in the hustle and bustle of any city, like Hong Kong, where these bags are designed. It's a top loader backpack made with insanely durable materials, brings a lot of comfort to the table, but ultimately is quite minimalist in its feature set. It's 25 liter capacity, which for me is pretty big on the everyday carry end or very small for the weekend travel pack. But that's the great thing about a bag this size is it can do both. And it should be noted that it comes in two different material options. There's the Cordura material option, which weighs 1.4 pounds, and the X-Pack material option, which weighs 1.58 pounds. This is the bag when it's empty, and this is the bag when it's packed out. And I'm gonna pack out this bag throughout the entire review so you can see exactly what it fits. All Able Carry products are covered by their lifetime warranty against manufacturing defects. And for all of that, the Cordura version costs around 128 USD and the X-Pack version runs around 162 USD. And if at any point you're like, oh my God, I love that bag. I'm getting one. And you're gonna make a purchase. We do ask that you do so using the first link in the description. Reason being is that link makes sure that you get the best price. And it also helps to support the Nomads Nation YouTube channel, which we greatly appreciate. Thank you. All right, let's start off by talking about the front of the Able Carry Daybreaker 2 backpack. First up, Able Carry's branding right here. Super subtle. Green on green. We've also got some branding on the back, but more or less, it's a very anonymous bag, very modern. It's not a walking billboard, which I personally a door. Next up, the material. And this material, X-Pack, is actually the same material that sailboats use on their sailcloth, which means it's highly durable and highly weather resistant. And pretty light. I can't believe this bag is 1.6 pounds. It makes sense with how light it is, but for like a bag of this size, 25 liters to be 1.6 pounds, that's cray. Let me know in the comments if you agree. Like, are you so stoked about the, the literage to weight ratio? Because because your boy absolutely is. And then with the front, we got this little fold right here. This is sort of an aesthetic thing, but also it does help allow the bag to sort of expand a little bit in case you're packing it out. But more or less, that's the front. Let's really get into the meat and potatoes with this bag and talk about the middle of the Able Carry Daybreaker 2. Let's start inside number one. We have a water bottle holder. I got a 22 ounce water bottle from the brand Columbia and you can see it fits perfectly with some room to spare. Love the expansion right here. It's a nice little well-designed gusset, which means if you have a thicker water bottle, it should be able to fit no problem. Not like a big old Nalgene, but a bigger water bottle, no problem. And as you can see on the sides, we got a lot of external lash points going on and that extends to the bottom as well. External lash points are ideal for carrying things externally on the back. Now on the opposite side of the water bottle side, we've got Got this right here, which is a quick access pocket. I freaking love this pocket, because I'm lazy. And when I need something, I don't wanna have to take my bag off, put it down, unzip the top, get what I need. That's a whole thing, dude. Swinging the bag over to unzip and grab what I need right there. That is streamlined. And Able Carry is like, dude, we got a key ring holder there. So they're telling you the streamlinedness of this bag, they're saying pop your keys in here, right? You get home from a long day of work or hiking, whatever it might be. Then you don't have to dig your keys out of the main compartment. You just swing the bag around, unzip, grab your keys, unlock the door. You never have to take anything off. It's brilliant. It's perfect. And it's protected with a YKK PU coated zipper, which means it's weather resistant as well. And let's say you're one of those super cool people in the US, every time I visit, less and less of y'all have house keys. You can use this pocket for other things. You can throw your sunglasses in there, your wallet in there, really anything that you want quick access to. I don't believe that was on the original Daybreaker and I absolutely freaking love its inclusion. I'm assuming it was included, I think it was. Next to that pocket, we have a side handle. There's a side handle on either side. And these side handles aren't really as much of handles to carry the bag. In fact, don't carry your bag like this. He'll look crazy. But it's just a way to sort of grab the bag, move the bag. If you're going on a flight, you wanna sort of reposition it. It's just nice to have, adds to the aesthetic. 
it's a nice nylon, nice touch. And we have a handle on the top as well. Um, yet again, don't carry it like this. There's no padding, but just another point of leverage, especially on those flights. Bada bing, bada boom. Now let's talk about the main compartment. This is a top loader backpack. And one thing that drew me absolutely freaking crazy about the original was that it opened from here to here. It was just this little flappity flap, right? That means when you wanted to get in the bag, you just had this to get in. And it was like, oh, what's down there? I don't know. No, I'll never find out because I cannot see down there. I cannot reach down there. It is a black hole of death. So I criticized that pretty heavily. And I think other reviewers did as well. So Able Carry, listen, thank you, Able Carry. And they extended the opening all the way down on this side for a three quarter and now, et voila, now we're talking. This changes the game. Should be noted too, this is a YKK PU coated zipper, yet again, bringing next level durability to the game with this bag. And then once we're inside, we got a bit more organization than I remember in V1. We've got a side pocket, top pocket, a laptop sleeve, a hidden pocket, and sort of a back panel pocket. Back panel pocket right here, I don't know why they're giving you access to this. It might be if you wanna take out the back panel altogether, but sometimes the way the backpacks are constructed, they just have to add these parts in last. They can't sew them in. They have to like sort of just like add them in and zip them in. I wouldn't recommend taking that panel out. This bag is already 1.6 pounds, super freaking light. But I guess if you want to, you can. Next up, we got this little hidden pocket right here, which I quite like. It's hidden because you got this flap, right? So you can go ahead and zip it close and then pop the zipper in there. Just a little extra kind of peace of mind. Out of sight, out of mind, super secure. So let's say I'm going on an actual hike, right? And I want some things, you know, just kind of kept out of sight. I don't have my phone on me. And I actually have my phone and my wallet two in one right now with the Nomad Folio wallet. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my phone in there. Keep it safe. Headphones, backup cash, right? Zip that into place. And you can see right next to it, we have some external carry uh, lash points as well. So you can clip something onto there. Maybe your keys might be a good idea. It's not something that I'd really use. But let me know, like, are you, are you using these external lash points inside the bag? I don't have use for it, but I want to hear what you got to say. Let me know in the comments below. Now, what's interesting is this right here. This is called the stretch compartment on their website. And I like Able Carry's style. It says, is there a laptop compartment? And it says, our stretch divider is designed to fit bladders and can accommodate items up to X sizes. So they're not saying that it can fit a laptop, but they are saying it can fit things in a certain size. One of those things possibly being a 13 inch MacBook Pro. But here's the deal. This is not a designated laptop compartment. It is not padded. It is not advertised as a laptop compartment, but you can put a laptop in there. But if so, I'd recommend sort of double wrapping. That means get like a padded laptop sleeve, a really padded one. Make sure the dimensions fit, of course. But if so, I'd feel much more comfortable carrying my laptop in there because of it. Otherwise, this is an ideal location location for a bladder, hydration pack, right? Keep it in there. I don't think there's a hydration hole that you can slip the straw through, which is a bit unfortunate, but also helps with the weather resistance. Moving on to the side pocket, stretchy mesh, great elasticity. It's double layered for extra durability. And for me, I'm going to throw my tote in there. I always like to bring a tote around with me as an extra carry thing, right? Plus they're so small and compressible. And especially if I go grab groceries, I don't want to use the plastic bags. So a little side toe action. Perfect. And finally, for the pocket, we got this top pocket, which due to the materials, soft, silky, smooth. You can put your glasses in there. But I got my glasses in the side pocket, so I got some backup headbands, snacks, right? Little uh, microphone in case I do some content creation while on an epic hike through the mountains of Hong Kong. That's where all that gets kept. Nice organization. In essence, it's pretty minimalist. And I also want to point out, it's still not the greatest access. This is no clamshell opening backpack, right? I almost wish Able Carry went the extra mile and just opened this up all the way so you could clamshell it because this three quarters can be a bit annoying, but I will say it's a big improvement over V1. And this is not a travel bag. This is definitely like an I'm going hiking, walking around the city type backpack. And speaking of which, let's pack it out with some stuff. All right, I just got a bunch of stuff. Let's see what fits. So we're going for a day to the beach, right? I got a towel, pop that at the bottom, backup jacket in case it gets cold, headphones so I can kick out some jams, speaker so I can kick out some more jams. Tripod, content creator, guilty as charged. Extra shirt, backup water bottle for my wife. Tech case, right? I got my chargers and batteries and wires in there. Some extra tech stuff. I'll throw it in this pocket up top. Notebook on top in case I get all existential and just want to journal about my day. And can we close? with room to spare. You can see sort of how the bag has this expansion and we haven't even used that yet, but if you wanna pack up the top, this will act accordingly. And yeah, it's got pretty impressive capacity for 25 liters. A lot of that is because of the extra opening, right? So you can kind of squeeze stuff in there, but also there's not a lot going on in terms of the features of the main compartment. So there's not taking up any space. It's just a big old canyon. You throw stuff in, you're good to go. But is it comfortable? Let's find that out in the next section. Let's talk about the back of the Able Carry Daybreaker 2. One note of criticism that I had last time too was that the back panel wasn't very well padded and there was no ventilation. 
Able Carry obviously heard the reviewers and the people and they listened to us and they added these cuts right here. These cuts just kind of help some, gives the bag some three dimensionality, which helps with airflow. Cut right down that middle. And it gives a little bit extra comfort with the padding. Now when it comes to comfort, I like mostly what Able Carry is bringing to the table. Not that what they have is a bad thing, it's just a preference thing. And that's the lining that they use for their shoulder straps. For me, is a bit on the coarser side. Able Carry and Boundary Supply are sort of on the same page with this, where they're, these materials on their shoulder straps are coarse, they're thicker. And when you're trying to put the bag on, you're like, oh, is that, it's like sandpaper, dude, right? Versus like Air, who uses a silkier, smoother, softer material. But don't get me wrong, coarse equals durable. So it's a win and a lose. But on the pro side, we got some really nice padding and this coarser material has some really great ventilation for breathability. Put it all together and you got a really comfortable backpack, especially at 25 liters. And to enhance the comfort, Able Carry is like, hey, sternum strap, magnetic included. Sternum straps are great because they help to redistribute the weight from your back to your torso. This sternum strap is adjustable, so you can put it as high as to here and as low as to here. Unfortunately, there's no web holder, AKA dangle stopper, AKA Aaron hates this. I would've just liked a little web holder just to kind of keep that in its place. But the magnetic sternum strap is appreciated, super easy to clip off and to clip back on. And if you don't like sternum straps, this can be removed altogether, but I recommend keeping it because hashtag watch your back. It's really impressive. Oh, and one note, although they did not include a dangle stopper at uh, the sternum strap, we did get one at the bottom here. So when you're walking around, these web holders will keep the dangle in its place. And we got Duraflex hardware. Nice little cherry on top. Let's talk the overall pros and the cons of the Able Carry Daybreaker 2. Overall pro number one, super lightweight. Overall pro number two, I love the material and the green color of this particular X-Pack material. And pro number three is this quick access pocket on the side will go a long way when it comes to your everyday carry convenience. But on the flip side, I got a few cons. The access to the main compartment is still kind of limited with that three quarters thing. It's not full clamshell. The padding for the shoulder straps is slightly on the coarser side. And for all you keyboard warriors out there like myself, a designated laptop compartment would have taken this bag to the next level. Now, if you're still watching, there's a darn good chance, why am I talking with a Southern accent? Um, there's a really good chance that you might be thinking about buying one of these bags. And if that's the case, just a reminder, we do ask that you make your purchase using the first link in the description because that link makes sure that you get the best price and it also helps to support the Nomads Nation YouTube channel, which we greatly appreciate. But in case you're not completely sold, you wanna play the field a little bit, see what else is out there. I've reviewed 300 million backpacks, it feels like at this point. Let me throw some alternative recommendations your way so you can sort of kind of go down the backpack rabbit hole. Alternative recommendation number one is gonna be the Patagonia Black Hole. This will be for you if you kind of like this whole thing, but you don't need to hit that price point of buck 50, buck 70. I think the Patagonia Black Hole you can get for like 90 USD. Patagonia is a brand that a lot of people are into. It's a very similar take on this, but less premium and more affordable. And to learn more about the Patagonia Black Hole, navigate on down to the description below and you'll find a link to our full review. Alternative recommendation number two is going to be the Manal Daily Bag 3.0. This will be for you if you're looking for a bag that can do a little bit of city and a little bit of adventure, like the Daybreaker, but you want better laptop protection and just a more seamless sort of travel experience. I love the Manal Daily Bag 3.0. And to learn more about it, you can navigate on to the description below and find a link to our full review. And alternative recommendation number three is going to be the Able Carry Daily Backpack. Same brand, but a bit more urban, a bit more feature heavy, but a backpack that I definitely prefer in my everyday they carry over the daybreak or two. And you can find out why by watching this video right here. Be sure to let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I personally answer every single one myself. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Aaron. This is Nomads Nation, and we'll catch you next time.